Have you ever woken up and not been able to tell whether you're still dreaming or not? Like, you can't remember where you are or what time it is. And somehow, the more you come to your senses, the more surreal everything feels. I can't remember when it started, but I think it was this sort of confusion that gave me my fear of the night sky as a kid. We would be driving home late at night, and I'd catch a glimpse of stars through the city lights. I asked my mom once how far the lights go. She said that they never really stop, they just go into space forever. As we drove into the dimmer suburbs and more of the planets and constellations became visible, I couldn't help but realize the dizzying extent of it all. I think I actually got nauseous from the vertigo. It's this tendency of mine to get my head stuck in the clouds, trapped up in space where all I can do is look down at the earth, that made me decide I wanted to be an artist. For as long as I can remember, if you asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I'd say I want to tell stories. Doesn't matter how. It could be painting, or music, or novels, or poetry, or sculpture, or film. If I'm stuck watching the world from such a disorienting angle, I may as well paint a picture. I'm not sure what kind of story I'm trying to tell here. My experiences aren't some grand narrative from birth to 16. There's no cohesive arc, just vague build-up to a plot that's barely begun. And yet, it's like every day I've gone through all 17 stages of the hero's journey before mid-afternoon, just trying to get something, anything, out there into the world. There's always a million new ideas and a million things to do, but... You can't even follow a train of thought long enough to write a single sentence. All that comes out is jumbled words hinting at a vision, but every time you try to piece them together into something comprehensible, it falls apart. And the more you try and the more you fail, the farther you get from anything that makes sense. I've found that the worst thing to do on these days is to try and make it feel real again. That's how you start to panic, and when you start to panic is when suddenly everything you feel is terrifyingly artificial, and then you can't unsee that every sensation is like bad CGI, like you're trapped in the uncanny valley. Suddenly all your memories are washed a faded yellow, and you can't remember how you ever found an anchor, something to cling to, back down on Earth. And of course, there's the alternative. Call it a night go to bed, take your meds, and try to just focus on the sweet familiarity of the music in your headphones. But you wake up each morning, and sooner or later you have to face the fact that obligations don't just disappear, and when it really comes down to it, you have to find your own path out of the woods. But I suppose there is a simple ending to all of this, one that somehow still surprises me every time. No matter how many times I find my way back to the trail, I always forget that it's right there. But the second you step out of the thicket, you remember that you're not the only person here. There's others walking the same path who are happy to help you along, or just to talk and laugh and keep you company. And those people and those moments are what bring you back to Earth when your head gets lost in the stars.